Hello, uh, today we will look into a swinging pendulum. And this pendulum can be considered to be a swing, like the spark in the beginning of this unit. And in this motion, we do not look at the horizontal position or the vertical position, but at the angle the mass makes between the equilibrium position. In the lecture, I was told that this motion follows the following differential equation, which is L times the second derivative of theta is equal to minus g times theta. Well, before we go further, I want to make a small remark. And this equation only holds if theta is small. If the theta becomes too large, this uh, equation is not valid anymore and we cannot use it, but for now this is fine. So we can work out that theta should then be a sinusoidal, f sinusoidal function, with the amplitude is theta zero. And the argument is the square root of g over l times t plus v. If we plot it against time, we can see it's a nice sinusoidal, sinusoidal shape which oscillates over time. If we want to know what is the period it takes to go back and forward, we can look how long does it take for the sine wave to go up and down. This is indicated by the black line and is named t, and this is equal to 1 over the frequency. If we look at our uh, equation for the theta, we can see that the angular frequency is the square root of g over l. We also know that this uh, angular frequency is 2 pi times f. So 2 pi times f is equal to the square root of g over l. So f is equal to the square root of g over l divided by 2 pi. We just said that t is equal to 1 over f. So t is equal to 2 pi divided by the square root of g over l. And this is equal to 2 pi times the square root of l over g. Well, for linear motion, it holds that the uh, linear velocity is equal to the derivative of the linear position. For angular motion, the same holds. The angular velocity is equal to the derivative of the angular position. And we will denote this angular frequency with capital omega. We can just take the derivative of our uh, theta function and obtain this as the square root of g over l times theta zero times the cosine of the square root of g over l times t plus v. If we want to look at what are the units for our uh, angular frequency, we can fill in all the units for our parameters. g is in meters per, sec per second squared, l is in meters, and theta zero is in radians. Note that the cosine is just a number between negative one and one, so that this does not have a unit. We can work out the fraction and obtain that the unit is the square root of one over s squared times radians. And this worked out to be radians per second. And this makes sense because the angular velocity tells us how much radians we pass by in one second. Here we see our expression for the angular velocity. is the square root of g over l times v to zero times the cosine of the square, square root of g over l times t plus v. We can plot it together with our uh, position function and we can see they're out of phase. Uh, the velocity is maximum when the position is zero and the position is maximum when the velocity is zero. And this makes sense mathema mathematically because the cosine and sine are out of phase, but it also makes sense when you think about physics. When you're sitting on a swing, if you are the highest, you're at the point when you're hanging in the air for a while and do not move. In the other way, the point where you're the fastest is the point where you're closest to the ground, which is, is theta is equal to zero. If we now want to know how high can we get with a swing, we can look at what is the maximum kinetic energy we can have. The kinetic energy is equal to a half times mass times v squared, so the maximum kinetic energy is equal to a half times mass times the maximum velocity squared. Well, this velocity is the linear velocity, not the angular velocity. Well, it, it was given that the linear velocity is the angular velocity times L. We just derived the expression for the angular velocity, which is the square root of g over L times v to zero times the cosine of the square root of g over L times t plus v. And if we multiply this with L, we obtain that the linear velocity is the square root of g times L times v to zero, times the cosine of the square root of g over l, times t, plus v. If you want to know what is our maximum linear velocity, we can look at what is the maximum value our cosine can get. Well, the cosine is always a number between negative one and one, so the maximum value is one. So our maximum velocity is the square root of g times l, times v to zero. Hmm. We can then fill this in into our uh, kinetic energy equation to obtain the maximum kinetic energy is a half times mass times g times l times v to zero squared. If we are at the highest point, then all our kinetic energy is transferred into potential energy. So we can say that the maximum kinetic energy that we can have is equal to the maximum potential energy, 
we can have. We derive that the maximum kinetic energy is a half times mass times g times l times phi to zero squared. And we know that the maximum potential energy is m times g times the maximum height we can have. We can set those two equations equal to each other, and we can see they have some terms in common. First, we can cross out the mass on both sides, and since the g is also on both sides, we can cross those out. This gives us that the maximum height we can get is a half times l times phi to zero squared. So to recap what we have done, we looked at a swinging pendulum, where the motion can be described by the following differential equation. L times the second derivative of theta is equal to minus g times theta. We, we, you can work out that this solution is that theta is equal, equal to theta zero times the sinus of square root of g over L times t plus v. We then obtain the angular uh, velocity is equal to the square root of g over L times theta zero square times theta zero times the cosine of the square root of g over L times t plus v. And with this, we determine that the maximum height we can get is a half times L times theta zero squared. So thank you for watching and good luck with your exercises.